Dick Grayson was the first Robin and the first adopted son of Bruce Wayne. He was raised by Batman until he grew to adulthood and wanted to get away from Batman's considerable shadow. And so he became the hero Nightwing and set out to Bloodhaven to live on his own terms. And he's had a lot of adventures over the years, fighting everything from masked men to gods invading from alternate dimensions. And like most of the Bat family, he normally has no superpowers in the main DC continuity. Sorry, no superpowers for your collar to turn off. But with that being said, on several occasions he has gone superpowers from various sources. And this video is going to go over every time that Dick Grayson has gotten superpowers. Monster Powers In the crossover event Night of the Monster Men, an army of monsters are attacking Gotham, and one of the fights sees Gotham Girl and Nightwing teaming up to defeat a group of them. And at the end of the fight, Gotham Girl rips apart one of the monsters, and in the process covers herself and Dick Grayson in the monsters' insides and blood. And this mutates the pair of them into monsters themselves, and Nightwing becomes a sort of werewolf slash bat looking creature, giving him superhuman abilities in terms of speed and strength, and the ability to fly. Unfortunately, it also takes his mind, and turns him into a primitive creature who is extremely violent and appears to be running on instinct alone. Though fortunately, the Bat family is able to make an antidote and inject him with it, turning Dick Grayson back into his normal, charming self. He becomes a vampire. This occurs in the universe of the Elseworlds Red Rain trilogy of comics, where Batman becomes a vampire. And initially, Batman is able to use his new powers for good, but eventually he loses control and succumbs to his vampiric nature. And in the comic, The Search for Ray Palmer, Red Rain, we discover that because of Batman becoming more of a vampire, he has attacked and killed all of Dick Grayson's family, which then leads Dick Grayson to grow up to become a vampire hunter to get revenge for Batman killing his family. Now, Dick does this by using detective work to find Batman, even killing a Barbara Gordon vampire along the way. But unfortunately, after he finally comes face to face with Batman and has the chance to stake him for good, he hesitates. And he who hesitates is lost. So Batman bites Dick Grayson, and Dick Grayson becomes a Nosferatu himself. The comic is basically making him out to be Batman's evil vampire robbing counterpart. And incidentally, if you haven't read this trilogy, you really should, because it's a great story, and who doesn't love watching Batman turn into a vampire? <laughs> the Injustice Universe In the Injustice comics and games, he has acquired two superpowers. The first is of course the super pill that almost everyone in that universe is on. This pill makes Dick Grayson super strong and semi invulnerable, so that he can fight godlike beings like Superman in one on one combat. And the second time he gains powers is in the comic books, and it's after he dies in that universe and becomes a spirit in the afterlife. See, shortly after Dick Grayson's death, the superhero Deadman dies as well. Now, Deadman is of course a ghost, but he somehow manages to die again, thanks to magic, and as he dies, he bequeaths his powers to Dick Grayson, and Dick Grayson becomes the new Deadman, with the power to return to the mortal realm as an unseen ghost, and being able to possess the living. I'm calling security. I'll make sure the looky-loos stay out of our hair. We never actually get a conclusion on what happens to his character, he seems to just be wandering the Injustice universe. Though, personally, I'm really hoping he comes back in either the comics, or even better, the Injustice games. A healing factor. This takes place in the comic book The Dark Knight Strikes Again, and in this version of DC's history, Bruce Wayne was especially hard on Dick Grayson. He was brutal in his training, and he eventually kicked Dick Grayson out onto the street because he just wasn't good enough and was of no use to Batman, and since he couldn't use him, he just got rid of him. This version of Batman is much harsher than the one we have in normal DC continuity. But after having his parents die in front of him, and then having Bruce Wayne, his adopted father, reject him in such a way, it sent Dick Grayson a little over the deep end, and he decided to become better by going through gene altering experiments to give him superpowers. And so when Dick Grayson emerged from this, he had a healing factor so good that it put Deadpool's and Wolverine's ones to shame. He heals from pretty much everything, even having his own head cut clean off doesn't kill him. Although with that being said, eventually Batman was able to drop him into molten lava, and it seems that even his healing factor couldn't survive that. Superman's powers 
In an episode of Teen Titans Go, Robin is angry about not having superpowers like the rest of the team, while the other members of the team are all telling him it's a curse, not a blessing. And to prove this point, Raven uses a spell to give him superpowers. He has super speed, flight, heat vision, freeze breath, telekinesis, and super strength. And may have other powers as well, but those are the main ones shown, but he basically has the same powers as Superman, plus telekinesis, which makes him pretty formidable. And unfortunately for him, he uses these powers to end all crime on Earth. And this is bad for him because without any more criminals, there's no more need for heroes. And so the Teen Titans break up and Robin ends up getting a job working in an office. Anne lives to a ripe old age and dies with regret at ending crime as it took away his favourite pastime. They were right. These powers were a curse. Super Strength in another Teen Titans Go episode where Raven's father, the demon Trigon, comes to visit, he grants the Titans wishes, and Dick Grayson wishes to be a super muscled out person to the point of basically being the Hulk. Now this is a joke in the show and looks absolutely terrible, but there is no doubt that he does have super strength in this form, so it does kind of count as a superpower. Though he later loses this power after Trigon turns on the Titans and he ends up taking back the powers that he granted them. Which is a shame, because I must admit, even though I'm not a big fan of this show, I did kind of like the Starfire who has the power to talk like a normal Earth teenager. What's the haps, players? You need to stop talking. <laughs> Haters gonna hate. There is also a Teen Titans Go episode where Robin gains superpowers from eating avocados. Though it ends up with him going nuts and turning into a giant avocado monster. So the Titans cut him off from the avocados, and once all of the avocados are out of his system, he reverts to being powerless once again. Dr. Fate In the Flashpoint event, the Flash went back in time using his super speed powers, and he changed his past so that his mother never died. And he did this very badly, because when he changed time, he changed more than just this one event, and he created ripples through time that changed the entire history of the DC Universe. Now, there are great changes to everyone. Superman is never free and a hero, he's imprisoned. Instead of Bruce Wayne living and his parents dying, Bruce Wayne dies and his parents live, with his mother becoming the Joker and his father becoming Batman. And pretty much every character in the DC Universe is affected. And of course, that means there are changes to Dick Grayson's life as well. Now, his family do still die, but afterwards he is looked after and teams up with Deadman to be part of the Resistance. And throughout this little mini-series, we never actually see him get any superpowers, but at the end of it, he is holding the helmet of Dr. Fate, and tells the other heroes to call him Dr. Fate, so it's clear that he's going to use this helmet to get magical powers. Though it is annoying that we never actually see him put the helmet on, as we don't technically know if he got those superpowers. And of course, it would have been interesting to see what art design they would have gone with, with a Dick Grayson slash Dr. Fate costume. And in the comic Grayson, in which Dick Grayson joins Spiral as an agent, he is injected with nanites that stop his face from being visible in any electronic device and also in people's memories. So as soon as a person stops looking directly at Dick Grayson, they can't actually remember what his face looks like. Now this would actually be incredibly useful for all the superheroes of the world, and quite frankly it's amazing that every hero isn't automatically using this stuff. But whether or not this counts as a superpower is up to you as technically it's the nanites with the power, not Dick Grayson, but I felt that it still deserved a mention. And finally, there is one other time that's not really a superpower, but I do think it deserves mentioning. In the original and classic Teen Titans animated series, there is an episode in which Robin creates the Red X persona, and he builds a super suit that is able to cloak him, seems to increase his reflexes and strength, and of course has more gadgets than even Batman's utility belt. And though these are not technically superpowers, I do think they still deserve mentioning, because he actually has more power than a lot of heroes who have superpowers, and because it shows how intelligent and resourceful he is that he's able to create something like this. I mean, it's like an Iron Man level of intelligence that this teenager has got. Plus, who doesn't love how that Red X outfit looks? And that is every time that Dick Grayson has gotten superpowers. Of course, this character has been in media for decades, so if there are any times that you think I have missed and should have been mentioned, please let us know in the comments. Along with what power you think would be best for Robin, and which one of these times that he has gotten superpowers is your personal favourite. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.